UFC 308, Taporia versus Holloway. Even Dana White has said he doesn't want to see any, either of these guys lose. Someone's got to. Someone's got to lose. We're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to break down all the fights and give you uh, some of our best bets as well. Uh, let's just get right into it. Jim, tell me when to stop. That'll be our four-letter word or four letter word for the comment section. Now. Rack. R-A-C-K. Oh, Leave a comment in the comment section. Give me your best bet. If not, if you just want to help out, help help the algorithm, type in rack. Based on some of the comments we've gotten before, I can only imagine how many boob <laughs> jokes are going to be in the comment section. Let us have them. Let us have them. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Let's get into it. Bruno Silva and Ismail Nardiev. Where are you going with this one, Jim? I want to fade Bruno Silva, but I, I don't know about this Ismail Nardiev. <laughs> Your sound effects said it all. For this yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Let's just say I'm not going to be rushing to my TV to watch this fight at 12 o'clock or whatever. It starts. 10 30 a.m. I think. 10 30 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really don't have a giant opinion on this. It's two fighters that, and you're, you guys are going to hear this a lot from me on this breakdown. So, I apologize if it sounds redundant, but I'm not going to give you a strong opinion if I don't have one. Um, I know how bad Bruno Silva looked, but this Ismail Nardiev at this weight class, I have massive questions. Why in the world is he getting this fight? He's getting this fight because he's from the Middle East and we're in uh, Abu Dhabi. It's just, that's yeah, why. Of course. Of course. That's, that's why. There's, so there's a few, of these I can't bet on, on this court. before the fight starts. <laughs> What I can do is bet this fight to go the distance. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> because uh, I think you could see two very tired fighters. All right. Um, I will just say that Ismail Nardiev is not very good. Um, I mean, this guy's lost two out of his last three fights. This guy that he beat here retired right after. <laughs> that was that was he's an older guy. It was his last fight. Uh, he lost these in both the same way where he was pushing forward, drops his hands, and gets smashed with a counter, and the fight's over. Uh, just horrible technique. Um, this is actually, like, what, what it's, his, it's his second run in the UFC, and it's, kinda, it's, it's interesting that his last fight he lost to Sean Brady, which is aged, you know, not, not that bad, but, you know, mm -hmm. d you know decision. Um, yeah. So it's second run, two and two, just massive holes in this game. Offensive striking is okay, but it's not terrifying. And I think Silva's way worse. I think Silva's way worse. Wow. I mean, I, I really do. Like, and think about this, Jim. What if this Bruno Silva were to fight Alex Pereira today? What are the odds that it goes the distance? Oh, zero. Plus, Negative 10. like, 15,000. <laughs> this guy went the distance with Alex Pereira. It makes no sense. Of all the fights in UFC, is this one aging the weirdest? It's pr <laughs> it's a pretty wacky one, isn't it? Like, <laughs> like this guy went on to lose to Mir Sharp, Brendan Allen, Chara, and Chris Weidman. Um, so, I, Bruno Silva's looked terrible. I don't know if he was on the special vitamins and now he's off, but he does not look like the same guy. I, it, he doesn't look like the same guy. He has no cardio. He has no offense. He's one in five in his last six fights. I think this is his walking papers fight. It's Nardia for me. I, I, there's there's no world you can bet on Bruno Silva. Not after losing to Chris Weidman like you did. Yes, he got poked in the eye 14 times, but still. <laughs> and still. You just can't. You can't bet on Bruno Silva. All right. Ibo Aslan and Rafael Sarkaria, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you make of these two guys? Speak of fighters fighting in the Middle East. Uh, Ebo's on my fade list, man. Uh, I'm looking for a reason to fade this guy. Uh, most certainly. Uh, he made the pleasure man look like about 10 times the fighter that he really is. And that fight should have been over really quick. He looked timid. The second that he had damage put on him, he didn't react well to it. He started backing up. He swings wild. Not a lot of giant technique. Uh, he loses his technique the second that things get gritty. It's just wild hooking punches. And you guys have heard me say it before. When you swing and miss, that's what zaps your cardio. So I've seen nothing that's going to tell me he's going to do anything different. He's done it his entire career. And then you have Rafael, who's extremely untested at this level. Is this a setup for Islan? Could be. Both these guys bring heat, I will say. 
They both bring heat. So this is one of the few fights on the card that I will take to not go the distance. This is either one of the most blatant setup fights, ridiculous 11 and 0 record that means nothing and he gets flatlined or this is the fade check of Ebo Aslan for sure, for sure. This guy is right to be beaten after that last performance against Turkali. I am going to go with the side that this is a setup fight for Aslan. Okay. The, this guy's I mean, this guy's fighting in high school gymnasiums against mm-hmm. six and three fighters in demo fight 19. He got that fight because he beat a one and one fighter in demo fight 18. This guy's fighting a who's who of absolute nobody. Um, I, 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 th- I think Aslan carries way too much muscle. I think that's part that gets, gets him tired. I like, okay. It looks great. Those delts look amazing. I mm-hmm. get it, but man, it just doesn't seem like it translates to him. He's low volume. His cardio's, you know, not very good. And, but this Sir Kerry, he's low volume as well. And he doesn't have very good striking defense. He, he, I watched him get pushed back against the fence. He does not check leg kicks. I think I watched him check one and eat like six or seven of them, but he gets away with it. That's the, and that's the thing about when you're fighting these super lower level is yeah, you can eat some leg kicks from Rodrigo. Yeah. You, you know, as, as, I don't want to say bad as Aslan is, but you're right. He's right to be beaten. I just don't think Sir Kerry is the guy. I think it's a setup fight for Aslan to get a, a, a nice win. And then we look to mm-hmm. jump on the fade train. Like maybe it, it, I'm hoping he wins. It, it, this this would be great for us if Aslan wins because that way. He oh, would really, be fade central. Yeah. It, it, yeah. In his next one. So I'll take Aslan to win in the setup. Uh, blast from the past for us. Carlos Leal's getting a fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, against uh, Renat Fakhradinov. Um, I got to tell you guys, <laughs> I've never seen a fighter pull back and feel bad about knocking a guy out than Carlos Leal did in his <laughs> LF, in his last LFA fight. It was wild. Like even even Carlos Leal was looking at the ref, the ref like, "Are you serious?" And then he finally, and I say finally, you know, three minutes into the first round, but it was such a mismatch. Like Leal mm-hmm. like felt bad. Uh, for the guy, but yeah, our, our old PFL buddy now getting a kind of a last second shot here. Interesting matchup. Uh, what do you make of this one? I am so, so genuinely happy for Carlos Leal. I am happy for this man Good. that he gets his shot. It was very odd that PFL did not pick him up again. They just basically gave him his walking papers. Uh, when he was taking fights on short notice for them going up against Sada Busi when Sada Busi was, in his prime, I mean, fighting whoever they put in front of him. We made a, a wad on Carlos Dial over David Zawada. That was a one of that was a such a great times. fight. Ugh, that he was that crop of former UFC fighters coming in that year, and we're like, eh, David Zawada. Mm, I don't know. Um, same thing against Delano Taylor. I've had a great read on this guy. I hate that they put him in this spot, though. He he had another fight booked on this card, which fell out. So did Fakhradinov, so they put him in this spot. So this is a doing the company a favor. I don't see him being able to really combat the wrestling. What we know about him in PFL is that he's able to be taken down. So Renat can get him on the ground. Now, that's all being said. I'm not willing to put my money on Renat as a favorite either because we've seen Renat give away third rounds consistently. He doesn't have the cardio to keep that wrestling up. I don't know if he's going to need to push hard against Leal. So I'll lean Renat in this spot, and I hope that they do Leal, Leal a really good solid in his second fight and let the MMA fan base really see what this guy can do because I'm a big fan. I think Renat's going to be just a little bit too much for him. I I, I know we're saying he, he started to fade a little bit recently, but he does get the split against Dalby. Uh, really weird fight against Zaleski. And then that win over Brian Battle is aging really nice, really nice win against Kevin Lee. I will say, you are right, though. In his last two fights, it's like, eh, it started to slow down quite a bit in the third round. So I don't know what's going on there. I just think this is a little bit too much of a step up for Carlos Leal. I, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even know if Leal is going to have the output and the just everything in the first couple rounds. Like, okay, if you give Leal the, the third round, He's got to win one of the other ones. And we're not as very good in the first couple rounds. So I think the, the, the grappling is going to be there. I think the striking is going to be there. So 
So um, you saying it that way, you like the fight to go the distance. I because that's that's where I'm at on this. I, I I like all. I love most of these fights to go the different distance. So yeah, this one. Yes, chalk it up. Yeah, uh, yeah, all right. Let's keep track of all the fights that we agree will go the distance. Because I think wouldn't surprise me if m most of these went the different. We'll start with this one. Mm -hmm. I think this is unanimous. Goes the distance, right? We're not in Leal. I like that one. I don't like. I like Ebo to not go the distance. Okay. And Leal fight to go the distance. Okay. I'm 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 passing on the Bruno Silva. Mm -hmm. I agree. Know, Nardiev. So. All right, so we're unanimous that Lee Allen, we're not, is going to go the different. We're going to end up with some kind of weird parlay about these fights to go the distance. So, all right, lean, we're not, but really, guys, I think betting wise, Jim and I have talked before recording. Mm. We're liking the overs a lot. Yeah. Like, don't ignore those totals. I think it's really going to come to shine um, in this one. All right, uh, speaking of what, we got a Basharat fight. <laughs> so, Freed Basharat and Victor Hugo. Um, it's Basharat, so you, you kind of lean that that it's going to go the distance here. But I got Basharat as a layup. Mm -hmm. I come on, Victor Hugo, um, he's, he's terrible. One Basharat fight between both brothers, I believe, has ended inside the distance in the UFC, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, if I remember correctly. Now and it, he, it was he, it was him. So it was, it was, the other it was um, yes, it was him. Technically, it was him. And yes. yes, that was an impressive choke. But what I've seen from Hugo is. Hugo can kind of keep the pace. He can engage in the grappling. He can still keep going. Uh, yeah, it's going to be Basharat by decision for me. I don't think that Hugo pulls it off. I do feel that in the third round, you might be a little nervous with Mr. Basharat. Um, but he also trains with his brother. They have relocated to American Top Team in Florida. They've moved there. They're training with that group. That's a great group. Uh, so I think they'll have him on point as far as cardio and strategy. Uh, we've seen the strategy part of it. Is that the Basharat's Achilles heel thinking they're winning when it's too close? Well, I think it, it just be? happened in, it happened in his brother's fight. Yeah. He, he got a little cocky. He got a little tired and I think it was good for him, but uh, we've uh, seen but it even in their wins, right? That the fights are kind of close in the third. They give away the third round sometimes. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not ready to fade him just yet. Not against Hugo. <laughs> no, not, no, not against Hugo. So, all right. So here's another one. Uh, goes the distance. So bang, there's two in a row. Um, but yes, it's Basharat. Money line's crazy. It's like minus six fifty. Even him win, win by decision when it comes out, it's probably be like minus four fifty mm -hmm. or something. But I I agree that Hugo's good enough on the ground to not get submitted. His cardio is decent. His striking's a joke. Um, mm -hmm. you, you barely find film on him in his, in his early thing, you know, in his, in his early fights. So yeah, it's Pashra. Uh, Kennedy, Kennedy, Zuchuku, Chris Barnett. I mean, come on, Chris Barnett. Look at that. What are Look at that photo. Doing? Um, what are we doing? Well, I know we're not, I know we're not doing it. We're not laying minus five fifty on Kennedy. That's what we're not doing. I don't care if he's, I don't care if he's <laughs> fighting me. You, you just not like this man just lost OSP mm -hmm. <laughs> in OSP's retirement fight. Uh, like it's weird because he has these three wins in a row, and you're thinking, okay, Kennedy to the moon, he's figured it out. It is like it's gassed out. <laughs> Jacoby knocks him out in the first round, and then he loses to OSP. Um, I take a sprinkle on Barnett by knockout. I don't, I don't. I wouldn't even take him by decision. Just Barnett by knockout. If he gets that mm. chin, puts him down, and gets on him and ground and pound, it, like I, it'd be pretty hard to pass up by like plus one thousand. When we do our method of victory, if that thing's ten to one. Mm. Man, mm. wait a minute now. <laughs> what do you think? What do you make of this one? Uh, I feel for Chris Barnett in this spot. He, uh, after last year, he had, a, I believe, a jaw injury. He broke his jaw. Yeah. Um, took some time off and really said, you know what? I'm going to pour all myself into MMA for these next couple of years I got left. His wife gets sick. Hurricane comes, wrecks his house. He's going through it. And now he's got to fly to Abu Dhabi and fight Kennedy. Normally, I would be all over fading Kennedy in this spot, but this smells like there's just too much stacked against Chris Barnett. 
It really does. And it's a shame what these guys sometimes have to do to make a living and provide for their family. Because if any of us were in this situation, we certainly would not be with our daily jobs. We'd be taking a couple weeks off of work, right? They they got to go in a a cage fight. Um, I also think that Kennedy and Chris, they're both really good guys. I don't hear anybody say a bad thing about either of them. I think this is going to be a really sexy fight to not go the distance or to go yet yeah, to not go the distance. This is my sneaky over of the, of the night here. We could see Chris Barnett land in half guard and be able to just lay on Kennedy. We could see Kennedy just want to do this point fighting battle and not really hurt Chris and appreciate the fact that he's taking this fight across the world and keeping Kennedy on the card. So, this is a, I'm I'm interested when the props come out what they're going to line the two and a half at or what, maybe it's a one and a half. If it's a one and a half, I am all over the over okay. one and a half in this. Um, after that, all bets are off. So if I have to pick a side, I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. That's uh, fine. They're both horrible. So hey, uh, you that's shouldn't be betting. Much, on yeah, the minus yeah. five fifty. If they crazy. line this at one and a half, I'll be real interested in over one and a half. All right, all right. Uh, move on to Abus Magomedov and Bruno Ferreira. Interesting matchup. What's your take? Man, is this, they're just like, they're making you try to plant a flag on either side with this car, and, and I just refuse to do it. Uh, Abus is a red flag in every way, shape, or form. He was an absolute murderer when he first got here, and then he's been humbled, and we've seen that he is not good at... MMA as a whole. He's a good kickboxer. He doesn't really have the cardio to push for three. Uh, The decision against Worley Alves, my Lord, was that an ugly fight. I mean, that was horrible. It's about as bad as it gets. The Kyle Borallo fight, we knew it was going to happen there. That was one of the best bets we made all year. Um, Strickland, I kind of thought the same thing. We watched that one live. And after round one, we looked at each other and we said, is this... Is this turning into a Sean Strickland play? It's done. Yes, it was. <laughs> All right, let's bet Strickland. Um, this decision to Worley Alves is just the biggest red flag in the world. Worley Alves is getting knocked out on the regional scene now, uh, and he couldn't do it. Bruno Ferreira, I don't think, is some big giant talent either, but what he is is young. He is a brick for a head, and he is going to walk forward and put pressure on a boost. And that could be this man's Achilles heel. He does not deal with pressure. Well, he has to lead the dance. So give me Bruno Ferrer in the spot. Not a fan of his skill set, but I am way less of a fan of a boost. I can't believe we get to fade a boost at plus money. I'll take, mm-hmm. you, you said plant your flag. I'll plant my flag that a boost is not very good. Um, I'll take Bruno Ferrer. And so I know a boost is cardio's hot garbage. Mm-hmm. I know when they get out of the first round, he's done. Um, you're right. Laying on Alves was just like torture. I don't know about Bruno Ferrer's cardio. Why? Cause he's always, he's always finishing yeah. the round one. Guess what? It just has to be better than a boost <laughs> It has to be. Um, if a boost doesn't get him out of there in the first round, I think Ferrer is live for the KO. I think, I think, I think, um, I think Abus may attempt to do what he did against Marley, maybe try and wrestle him, take him down. But Bruto's, like you said, he's young, he's athletic, and he's got a brick head, and I think he's going to survive the early storm, and I think he's going to knock out Abus in round two or three. Because that's that's Ferreira's job. Your job is to get out of round one. Mm-hmm. Don't get knocked out. Get out of round one. Because if you do, it's yours. It, it, that, yep. that is on a silver platter, and it's plus money. So, yeah, I would I would absolutely take – uh, Bruno Ferrer. Um, I, we got burned on a boost's last fight going the distance. I can't, I can't, I don't have it in me to pick a, pick a, a total in this one. Cause a boost could knock out Ferrer. That's possible. I don't see a boost laying on Ferrer for, for the, for the couple rounds. Cause I think Ferrer's Ferrer's young and athletic enough to fight back. So my pick is Ferrer at plus money. I'm prop, stunned. Prop wise. I will be looking at uh Ferrer round two and round three. Yeah, I think that's a good way to attack it. As other than a total, Mm -hmm. you got to be okay sprinkling a unit or or, um, like a half unit on each round. But if he wins, it's probably not going to be in round one. And if a boost's cardio goes away, this Ferreira kid will stay on him. Absolutely, one hundred percent. 
All right, we move to uh, Oral Buy and Mateus for Becky. Um, wow, Oral Buy minus two ninety, minus three hundred, minus three twenty five. Wow, that's a really steep price, my opinion. Um, recency bias because of what Rebecca did in his last fight, or do you think this is warranted? I think this is also the steam from Abu Dhabi. All these fighters whose home base is there, we're going to see inflated lines. You're going to pay a premium for all these guys that are popular over there, and Oroba is one of them. So, you know, I would line him minus 180-ish. Okay. He would be sub minus 200. Uh, I think that he's going to make Rebecca fight the same fight that Rebecca just fought. I don't think that Rebecca is going to be able to power wrestle him. Therefore, it's either going to end up with Oral Buy on top or it's going to be a stand up striking affair. And we just saw the amount of damage that was put on the face of Rebecca. It was bad. We were talking at the time that. That is damage that takes a long time to get over. The amount of scar tissue that is now built up from all of that swelling. Uh, he couldn't see out of either eye. He was cut. He was just destroyed. Um, if he has to stand, I think we could see more of the same. I don't think Orolba is a big dynamic striker, but I think that he's going to have a pretty good size and strength advantage, even though Rebecca's a powerhouse. He's just a bigger fighter. So if this becomes a wrestling match, it's like having a fighter in two different weight classes. Huge mm -hmm. advantage. There's a reason why we have weight divisions. So yeah. I like Oral Bai. I like his, his skill set. I think he sticks to a game plan, which we know Rebecca doesn't. Um, so give me Oral Bai. I just don't like the number on the money line. Also, this fight to go the distance. This is one. This is lockstep. Uh, yeah. All right, so we have our third one to go the distance. Yeah, Orobai is going to use his jabs as striking to push him up against fence and try and take him down. That, that's kind of his mo. Um, great fight against Brenner. Uh, yeah. in his, his last that was just a really entertaining, uh, great fight by both guys. I think we're. I think I, as bad as it looked against Diego Ferreira, I just think Rebecca came out too hard, too fast, and oops, I didn't get to finish, mm -hmm. and now I'm exhausted. And I wonder, I just wonder, did the new gloves take a little something off of what Rebecca thought he had? Because um, he steamrolls uh, Loic, he steamrolls Roosevelt Roberts, and he's like, I'm going to steamroll Diego, Diego Ferreira. Oops, I didn't. And now I'm exhausted and there's nothing I can do except stand here and just take all these punches. I don't think he does. It, there's no way he can make the same mistake twice. I am pretty surprised he's taking this fight kind of that you know that that close but if he's good enough to fight yeah i think this is going to be kind of a there's i think there's going to be a lot of um clinching and kind of maneuvering to see who can get who down uh because i feel like that's kind of where they both want to be and i think that eats up a lot of clock and i don't really care who wins i think i'm just going to take this one to go the distance but I'm not laying minus 290 on oral buy no uh, it's that, too expensive it's way it's, it's way expensive. too much you got to parlay that with something or you got to pick a method of victory, and that one's kind of tough. So I think the value's in the dog, but I'm not going to be betting it. I'll just be looking at to, to go the distance. So. We'll see what Oral Buy by decision is. If he's only 290, maybe we can get even money decision. Okay. Yeah, true. Uh, Jeff Neal and uh, Rafael Dos Audio. So I said last week, <laughs> I'm done not making money off of these old fighters who are completely washed. And I didn't pre-bet uh, Elise Reed over Jessica Penne, but you better bet your booty. I live bet that you know what <laughs> out of Elise Reed <laughs> uh, once I saw, once I got a look at Jessica Penne. So this is just going to be one of my one of my theories I'm sticking to, which is when I see a fighter and my gut reaction is, holy shit, they're old. <laughs> like, I, that is the green light special. So... My question to you is, does this fit this box? This is a 39-year-old RDA. Yes, he's past his prime. Just lost to Gamrot. And it wasn't the worst performance in the world. I didn't think Gamrot looked all that great. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, loses to Luke. <laughs> so, okay, congratulations on beating Brian Barbarena. Uh, You should. Gets knocked out by Fizia, but he actually... You know, did pretty well in that. And then beating Moicano, 
Like yeah. this guy, this but guy's remember, that was a really late notice moment for the Moicano. Okay. We were, uh, that I throw that Moicano fight out. That's not okay. the Moicano we know and love today. Okay. So is this a, a perfect spot to fade the older fighter? He's 39 and Jeff Neal's coming off these two losses, Gary and Shavkat. I'm not like, listen, mm-hmm. if you, you want to hold that against him? Go right ahead. I'm not going to. Uh, what's your take on Jeff Neal and RDA? Does this fit the fade the old guy? <laughs> Let me. <laughs> how much action do you think we're going to see in this fight? <laughs> I think this fight is going to be absolutely horrible. I am not looking forward to this fight at all. Okay. Uh, 32 and so fade the old guy, number one. So he's almost 40 years old, right? Yeah. He's 49. 39. 39. Okay. Yeah. He's got 48. Pro fights. I think you can add a year or two onto that age with that many fights. I, I, the wear I and tear. Yeah, it's a lot, man. And it's showing up. Um, his chin is still there, but it's just like his body doesn't move. And, you know, as you get older, your reaction time is one of the first things to go. You can still be a monster in the gym, lift weight, be fast, hit the pads good. But defensively, your reaction is so much slower. And mm-hmm. that's why it's so much easier to get hit when we get older. Um, this is also, I believe, at welterweight, right? Or are we at lightweight? The, I, they're fighting mean? at welterweight. So uh, RDA can't really make 155 anymore. So he's forced to fight at 170. Yep. Neil is going to be the bigger guy. I think Jeff Neal is a pretty boring fighter myself. I've never been a big what? fan of him. <laughs> <laughs> but I can guarantee you one thing we're going to see in this fight, a whole lot of cage control, whole lot of leaning up against the cage for both guys. So I think Neil's going to be able to squeak this thing out at the end. I absolutely love This is my favorite fight goes the distance on the whole card. Absolute Lockstep. favorite one. Yeah. Lockstep. Jeff Neil's number not four. finishing anybody. <laughs> no, there's, there's, there's number four. So we got Neil RDA, Oral by and Rebecca, uh, Bashar, Hugo, and Fakhar Dean off the We got four fights that we love to go the distance. Yeah, I, I'll have to think about it. Time of recording this video, I, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten to the window on Jeff Neal. It has to be a parlay piece though, because Neal is, you know, so mm-hmm. like Neal's pretty juice. But I, I could figure out a way to put him with something. But yeah, again, best play over. Shara Magomedov and Armin Petrosian. And you don't understand the, the line at all, do you? I this makes no sense. This is favoritism. This is fighting in Abu Dhabi. This is a name. Could you pull up Shara's uh, profile, please? Absolutely. So we see a 14 and 0, right? We do. Okay. All right. So we'll give him credit for beating Oleg Zaychuk. We'll give him credit for beating Anton Tricali. We'll give him credit for beating Bruno Silva. Now, we have a seven and six fighter. We have a 21 and five, which I'm sure is one of the most padded 21 and fives you'll ever see. Look at this guy. Oh, he's a come on. He's a childless cat lady. Come on. (laughs) Give me a break with these divisions. I don't think Shara is anywhere near as good as everybody makes him out to be. His signing is a let's please uh, the Abu Dhabi fan base and get their guy in. They can only book this guy over there. He can't get a visa to come to the United States. This is the only thing they can do is book him. Now he's 14 and 0. He's got to start fighting legitimate people. I believe Armin is one of those legitimate people. We haven't seen any wrestling from Shara whatsoever. He, oh, I did, I did against Olga Sechek, and it wasn't going well for him, for Magomedov. No, and <laughs> I've, I've never seen someone round. literally have no idea how to do it. Get your arms around someone's neck and not know how to apply a choke. It was obnoxiously pathetic. Now, all I can hear everyone say is <laughs> how bad Petrosi. It was horrible. <laughs> it, I was screaming at the TV, that one. Absolutely screaming. That fight should have been over. Um Beats Christian Leroy Duncan by decision. Keeps his composure while Duncan is throwing flashy stuff. Keep that in mind. Loses to Rodolfo and looks horrible. However, that is an opposite matchups galore fight right there. 
I mean, all of Rodolfo's strengths are Armin's weaknesses. Before that, school's A.J. Dobson loses on the ground to Kyle Borrello. Beats Gregory Rodriguez in a stand-up fight. So yeah. what's the trend that we're seeing here? If you can wrestle, you can beat this man. If it's a kickboxing match, they might as well make it K-1 and not UFC. The reason I bring up the Duncan fight is because Shara's going to throw spinning stuff. He's going to throw all these kicks. And I think Armin's just going to stay tight. And we started to see Shara's gas tank go away. I know Armin can kickbox for three rounds. He can kickbox for 10 rounds. He will not get tired. So if we don't see any wrestling from Shara, I think this 14-0 and goes down this weekend. This has written on it, upset all the locals, upset everybody's parlays. This guy gets parlayed with Ankalaev. It's going to be all over the place. <laughs> Give me Armin Prashojian. At plus money, planting my flag right there. Uh, what do you think about it to go the distance? A mm. little nervous? That's all right. We got others. Little. Just a little because I don't think Shara's fought a stand-up striker to this caliber. We don't. We, okay. we really don't know what he's going to look like when his kicks and dodgy defense. I'm with you. Somebody good. Shara holds his, his hands down to the side. He throws a lot of weird stuff, and it works against you know the, the guys that he's fought but mm -hmm. i'm with you that that this is recency bias from how bad petrosian looked on the ground shara ain't, ain't getting it to the ground so um yeah it's going to be two different two different fighters so um you may, you may i love you <laughs> the, the, parlay, the maga men of ankle uh, of parlay you're like that that parlay is going to get wrecked Whatever ends uh, <laughs> in a V, it's getting put together in a parlay. <laughs> Pretty funny. Pretty funny. So uh, just real quick before we uh, get out, get going with the next couple of fights, we do have our 5% college football best bet that is up. Uh, it's 5% play. It's our first ever in college football. 6-2 and two this year in college football, 19-6 and six lifetime in college football. You know how we do it. One play every week. And that's all we need. Uh, easy, no sweat winner last week on Army and their team total over. So uh, go grab that. We will have our uh, UFC best bets at a tough card. I, I, I will take this time now to just kind of warn everybody. This card has got some really, really tough spots in there. Don't force anything on it. Um, these guys are traveling a long ways. Body clocks, are, you know, can be off. You mm -hmm. can see some. Some weird things. So be careful with that. But we will have our UFC uh, best bets that are up. Uh, we always let everyone know where our record stands for 2024. 468 wins, 305 losses, plus 144 units, 8.1% ROI. Kind of been stuck in the mud the last couple of weeks. Uh, two out of three winning weeks. But um, looking, to, looking to get to that 175 unit mark before the end of the year. That's our goal. So, All right. You mentioned it. Ankoliyev, Rakic. I am just kind of hearing about why is Rakic this plus money? He's good. Why is Ankalaya such a big favorite? Rakic is really powerful. Um, I don't know about you, man. I I'm I'm out on Rakic. That's too much damage. Huge mm -hmm. knee injury. Get, he just got ground and pounded out. Um, I don't know. Could he still have success? Yeah. Against someone like, like Ankalaev, man, tall, tall task. Um, I don't know. I I guess I was never, I guess I was never really a Rakic guy. Like the fight against Tiago Santos was not super impressive. You know, decision win, decision mm -hmm. win against Smith. You know, loses to to Ozdemir. The 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 knee injury to Jan was awful. Yep, and then he comes back and Yuri just you know, beats the shit out of him in the, in the second round. And now you're going to go, going to go up against Ankalaev who, I mean, let's face it, man, this guy's kind of been on a tear. Um, like where's his loss? Paul Craig in 2018. Mm -hmm. I know it's juicy, but I wouldn't tell anybody to be worried about putting Ankalaev in their parlays. I think it's pretty safe. What do you think? Uh, everybody hates Ankalaev. And Why? <laughs> Why? He can be, I, I, he can, I don't know. He can be boring. Uh, I, I don't know. Just like, like, yeah, he knocked well, I'll, out. I'll, let me, I'll rephrase that. Everyone in the U.S. hates Ankalaev. Okay, there. <laughs> all right, there you go. That's fair enough. Because he's not their big knockout light heavyweight. Like he's just not. He's not going to fight that way. And to be honest with you, guess what? 
he doesn't give a crap what everybody thinks. <laughs> he, he's True. not going to change his game plan. Yeah. Um, the draw was gutting for him. Uh, I remember watching that and just like, man, they're just never going to get this guy to a legit title. Are they <laughs> like, they keep trying and it's just draw. Just draw. You're like, God, <laughs> All right. And then he comes back the no contest against Walker where Walker <laughs> apparently forgets how the UFC rules work. And he wants to really keep fighting. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. We'll keep fighting. <laughs> and then he sends Johnny Walker into oblivion, which was that fight was on its way to already. So, I think this is Ankoliev. Uh I have questions about the durability of Rakic and the ground game of Rakic. Uh, also, the motivation for Ankoliev on his home turf. I wonder if he'll be a little more motivated to open up and go after this kid a little bit more. Uh, I agree with you. I think that Rakic has taken a career's worth of damage, um, and we could be seeing that all catch up. This is the second fight after that injury, but he looked... People say that he was winning that fight against Yuri. I think he was playing into Yuri's hand. He fought that fight exactly how Yuri Prokashka wanted him to fight. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't show uh, you can't get into a gunfight with Yuri. And that's exactly what he did. So yeah. I think he's going to probably end up getting played into how Ink Alive wants this fight to go. So I think we're pretty safe on Ink Alive in this spot. I think he's the next title challenger. It's him versus Pereira. Yeah, if we're breaking down the X's and O's of how I see this fight going, I know Rakic can have good leg kicks, but can, so can Ankoliev. Like, Rakic has to damage up Ankoliev early. If he doesn't, Ankoliev's going to damage him up, and it's all going to result in a takedown where Ankoliev just works that, that ground game. Um, wouldn't be surprised if, if Rakic got another ground and pound KO loss. Um, but uh, unless Rakic gets it done early, this, uh, you know, ankle live is, he's just going to grind him out, man. Mm -hmm. This is going to be out grinding it. I don't think it goes well for Rakic. I would be perfectly fine with putting ankle live in parlays. Um, I, this one, no, on going the distance. This would not, I would, this one, no, no yeah, I, I wouldn't it, take no. this one. No. All right. This one I would. Laurel Murphy and Dan Ige. Mm -hmm. I have this one circled as as my uh, for the article I wrote for uh, Wager Talk. The very first sentence is fight goes the distance. I don't care who wins. Yeah. <laughs> I I just these guys are they're really good. Their styles they're not a hundred percent the same, but they're gonna stand, they're gonna strike. I think I think uh, Dan Ige is gonna be trying to get a little bit more inside. Um Danny, I, I, sometimes he can lunge in with his punches a little bit more, but I just watched Lowe Murphy. That was a war, man. That was a great fight against Barbosa, but goes the distance. Five rounds. Josh Cooleybell goes the distance. Gabriel Santos goes the distance. He just doesn't have that, that KO power when he's fighting guys, you know, similar to his level. So it ends up being a, you know, kind of a point fight. And, you know, Danny Gay, uh, you know, goes the distance against Lopez. Okay, he knocks out Feely, whatever. Mm -hmm. But decision Mitchell, decision Landweir. Um, did, like, neither of these guys have been finished. Like, Laura Murphy's never lost, and Ige don't believe he's ever been finished. All of his losses have come <laughs> by decision, even going back to 2015. Um, so I just I, – I, I think the odds are a little bit crazy. I would lean Lerone Murphy. I'm not paying minus 250, but I don't care. I'm not betting on the, the outright winner. I'm just putting this as to go the distance. What do you think? This fight is going to get people so mad. This is going to be a <laughs> razor close decision. going to get people so Every, mad. No matter what, people are going to be pissed, right? Because Lerone is... He's minus two seventy, so it's a little steep on. It's a lot of steep on. on it's on very actually. steep. It's not a um, little. Come on. So what does everybody do? If you have a state that has a three and a half, you're going to take him minus three and a half. Oh, okay. Right? And then that split decision is going to read out twenty nine twenty eight. Um, that's actually <laughs> where I'm going to look in this is the plus three and a half on Ige. Now I know not everybody can get that, so I agree with you. It is fight goes the distance. All day, all week, twice on Sunday, these guys are going to a decision. We're not going to know who won. There's going to be a screwy scorecard that's going to have it 30-27 for one guy, and it's going to be a split decision either way. They're extremely closely matched. It's three rounds. We know they both can go five. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah. recipe for just two cats in an alley for 15 minutes. And I, 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 you hit the nail on the head. Don't care who wins. 
give me fight goes the distance. Absolutely. I think 100%. Dan's going to uh, coming up to the fight card. I think they're going to do a lot of press about Dan taking this fight. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him take money. I also wouldn't be shocked to see him take money live. So oh, just okay. think about the numbers here. Don't lay the 270 on Murphy. You might get a better number come fight time. Okay. All right. Uh, Robert Whitaker in Kamzat Chemaev. What happened to Chemaev, man? Where, where, where did it all go <laughs> wrong? I mean, in September of 2022, it was like, this guy is on a fast track for title shots. He's going to be in our fighting lives forever. This guy will take a fight on a moment's notice. And then he's had one fight in a fight. He didn't really look that good in against Kamaru Usman, who Usman took on last second notice. What happened with, with Chimaev? How do, how do we get here? Like I, I like completely forgotten about him. Compl I, I, it's like, Oh, he's fighting again. Um, so I don't know. Uh, he's a big favorite here to be honest in a five round fight. I will just say it. You're out of your mind if you lay this this price on Chemayev in a five round <laughs> fight. You are out of yep. your mind. If you've done it already, I'm pulling for you. But if you do it after I've just warned you, you're out of your mind on Chemayev at minus two fifty in five rounds of action against Robert Whitaker. That's where I stand. Can I toot my own horn for a minute here? I'm good anyway. Toot um, away. So everybody called me crazy, and I got some really obnoxious messages and emails uh, when I stated when Shavkat was only two fights in that he was better than Chemayev. Oh! And I got told I was insane. You don't know shit about anything. <laughs> you don't know anything. Well, everybody, look where we are now. <laughs> yeah. Shavkat has proven that he is the rightful uncrowned champion, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. in this weight class. And Chemayev, look, here's the thing. The guy came out and said he doesn't want to fight forever. He wanted to provide for his family, get his mother a house, bought her a house, got them all set financially, and we haven't seen the same fighter since he started making the money. This is a sports thing in every sport. When athletes get paid and they make big dollar, it changes how they play. Mm -hmm. It changes how they fight. It changes how they market themselves. It changes a lot. Now, uh, Chemayev did change his camps, said he was doing a lot of things wrong. Yak, 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 yak. This is another 13-0. and 0. Is he going to retire undefeated? Well, maybe if he finishes this fight. <laughs> he, might. He, but might finish. he might. He might. Might never see a title, but he's, he could retire undefeated. Um this is a tall task. Uh, real simple way to bet this. We spoke earlier in the week. There's only one way to play this fight. You are going to watch the first round, and you're going to hope that Robert Whitaker survives. Then you're going to watch the second round, and about halfway through the second round, you will see Chemayev's cardio fail. And when it does, you have climb on Robert Whitaker. Because yeah. in a five-round situation, rounds three, four, and five, I want Robert Whitaker all day long. Because Rob loses by finish. He does not lose decisions. So it's either <laughs> going to end early, okay? Or Rob is yeah. going to get the decision win. Yeah. So what's this going to happen? So that's how I'm playing it. Yeah, probably live bets best. You're right. We called it with Hernandez and Pereira. We got Anthony Hernandez at minus 140 <gasps> against Pereira when Pereira was <laughs> just starting to gas. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Just Whitaker, just. You don't even have to be competitive in round one. You can get no. 10 aided. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Just don't get choked out or, or ground and pounded out. That's all. <laughs> yep. Just because, uh, I mean, like I said, Chimaev was falling apart. <laughs> in, like the later this fight went, and he is the classic. When we've talked about cardio on the feet versus cardio on the yes. ground, like Chimaev yes. is, he is the <laughs> ultimate. Like, why does this man have such good cardio on the ground? Except when he's punching on the feet, he's mm -hmm. dead to the world. So, uh, Whitaker live will be the play. Yes. Uh, Chimaev's also had a lot of health problems. <clears throat> we don't know how all of this is affecting him. Maybe that's why he's been away so long. Can't be, so, can't be great for him. <laughs> we, we, uh, we saw this with Colby Covington, uh, how he's yeah, got to take a year off just to get himself back to the cage. That's crazy. Yeah, it's that's it's yeah, it's pretty bad. So, uh, okay, so we're gonna play it live. 
We're going to stay away from Chemayev to begin with. We're going to hope that he gets tired and uh, Whitaker survives, and then we can grab a Whitaker live line. So um, this is another one I, I will not take to go the distance. I think uh, I think a finish could could have, especially Chemayev's cardio problems. All right, main event time. If you guys have not hit the like button, go ahead and do that, and go ahead and leave a comment. Tell us what your best bet is. Tell us if you think we're crazy um, with some of these lines. We love busting balls. It's fine if you mm-hmm. guys want to bust ours. Just keep it a little bit respectful. No name calling. Um, <laughs> try and try and hold off be on creative. saying. Be creative. be creative and try and hold off saying we don't watch tape and we uh, mm. obviously don't need don't need to study. Especially when we tell you that Kyra Phillips was a bad bet. I'll just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, but the, the the code word is rack. You guys I know help. we're we're being hindsight haters there too a little bit, but that's okay. No, it's, that, we that called cool. it. It was our parlay buster. Yeah, we we did was call. Not, there, there was nothing <laughs> hindsight about it. <laughs> so, but yes, tell us what we're crazy on. Uh, tell us what you like, and if you uh, don't have a hot take, just type the word rack in there. In the comment section helps out. All right, Taporia, Holloway. <laughs> Why is Holloway an underdog? <laughs> when are we going to learn uh, about? I'm not betting against Holloway. Now, I will say I'm not no. betting on this fight, but I'm certainly not going to bet against Max Holloway. Uh, no. What do you think? It's that quote from Star Wars, man. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, this Holloway dog money. They're just, they're dangling out there. And we're just a bunch of fish swimming around the hook. <laughs> Fine. I, everybody thinks Holloway's going to win. Everybody. Everybody I've talked to. Do they? Yes. Really? Wow. I have not had one person that I've spoken to online or in person tell me that Ilya Tapori is going to win. Interesting. And now I think I a bet lot of the publicity him. is come. Exactly. I want to bet Max from the beginning. Now I'm like, wait a minute. Hmm. I don't know, man. I want everything in my being says that Holloway just wins this fight with volume going away. And Taporia can't find the chin because nobody can find Max's chin. And the height difference is a problem. And Max beats him up with the jab and the head movement. And Taporia swings wild and misses and gets tired and all this stuff. Yeah. First for everything. And if we could predict the firsts, God, we'd be rich. I know. I know. So <laughs> all I know is that the Poria does have nuclear bombs in his hand. That man hits hard. Uh, he's been training his ass off. I know that he didn't really want this fight. He says he did. There's a lot of trash talk. I think we've done really good betting Max Holloway fights live uh, against mm. Arnold Allen. We got on Max really early. That looked great. There's a couple other fights that we bet oh, him got live. Him like Beijing, easily. Uh, we were we... all over him against a Chan Sung Jung. Um, oh, by by knockout, we were we were on him by oh, KO. Yeah. And... That was beautiful. Um, the Yair fight, I think, was another. Oh no, Calvin Cater. Calvin Cater was. Cater. One. I was I was against Yair yeah. because I'm not a Yair. Fan, yes, I yes, think. but Calvin Cater, we like. Oh, this is Max's fight. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just going to do this the whole fight. So if we see Max get into that state, I think we can bet him live. Uh, I'm too afraid of the Taporia flash knockout, and I know Max doesn't get knocked out, but like I said, there's a first for everything. So here's how I can kind of make the crazy case for Max. So you go, I mean, just, you know, put on amazing performance against Gage. I mean, he dominated from start to finish. He did what it did against, you know, Korean Zombie, fine. Great performance against Ar- Arnold Allen. Who's he lost to? Volk. Mm-hmm. Volk in his prime. Um, you know, j- just the boxing is, I mean, you could say he's probably one of the best ever, if not the best boxer pound for pound ever in UFC. And if I want to poke holes in Taporia, I'm going, yeah, you beat Volk, but you beat February 2024 Volk. Mm-hmm. What, what, you know, where's that guy at? Head case Volk. Yeah, head case. Volk was yeah, going he, through his issues. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Emmett, older Josh Emmett. Uh, couldn't get him out of there. And now we're Bryce Mitchell and Jai Herbert. Yeah. So you're <laughs> Ryan Hall. Yeah. That doesn't. So count. like, okay. Ryan Hall, Damon Jai Jackson. Herbert, Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like he's been like, you, you know, it's not, it, it, you want to go through the list of who's had the better opponents. It's Max Holloway. And it's mm-hmm. not even really close. So if you wanted to poke holes in that now on the flip side, you could also go, well, 
Tapori beat Volk and Max lost to him three times. So Tapori is on the way up. Um, I just know I won't be betting against Max Holloway. And yeah, right. Live lines will be open. And if we see Holloway, if we see Holloway start to toot him up in the first round and maybe we're like, oh, oh, Tapori may not have that KO power anymore. Um, the size would be really interesting. Face-offs may tell us a yeah. really interesting story. So Max with the quote of the card, by the way, was from Tapori. It was telling him, uh, you're too old. It's, 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 it's a young man's game. And Max in his cool Hawaiian accent goes, you're only three years younger than me, brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm in my prime, just like you. A lot of the talk from Tapori has seemed very hollow. That's why I bring it up. And yeah, I don't he's know not that great at trash talking. Well, he's trying. Just, He's trying. Trash talk is one thing, but I know he has self confidence. Ah, at fifteen and zero, what happens when this doesn't go his way? That's a good point. That's a good. Just point. saying. Yeah. All right. No pre bets. We'll watch it live. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do just a quick little, quick little rundown. All right. So. Silva and Nardia, both these guys suck. Don't bet this with your own money, but I'll pick Nardia for picture, for purposes of this video. I think Aslan beats Sakari. I don't think Sakari is very good at all. Um, you're kind of staying away. Um, Not really. I haven't got there yet, but now that hearing you say that, that's my two options. All right. Uh, Renat and uh, Carlos Leal, over. For Basharat and Hugo, over. Kennedy and Chris Barnett, we just enjoy it. it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Drink break. Abus and Bruno Ferrer. I'm on Ferreira Bruno. in that one. Uh, Oral by Rebecca over Jeff Neal and RDA over Shara and Petrosian. We like Petrosian Aglaev and Rakic. We like Aglaev, Lira Murphy and Dan Ige over Whitaker and Shemaev. You're live betting Whitaker. If it gets out of the first round, it's Poria Holloway. You're live betting if it looks like Max is winning the the stand up after round one. So, mm -hmm. all right, let's do our parlay buster. What do you think everyone is going to put in their parlays that is going to uh, trip everybody up? What do you think? Mm, I am going to go to Shara. Going to Shara? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going with Shara against Petrosian. That 14 0 got to go. Got to go. All right. All right. I will go with. I'll go, see. It's got to be. What is everyone going to put in their parlays? I'm going to go with Chimaev. I think Chimaev will be. Oh, I love this. Yeah, I think Chimaev will be undefeated fighters. Yeah, I think Chimaev will be a popular parlay piece, especially when he gets gets closer to fight time. And they're like, ah, Whitaker's older. Chimaev. All right. Uh, all right. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Um, these are the fight. These are the ones where ugh, you're just, the, the the fight's over, and you're like, "Why didn't we just lay the farm on that one?" What's your woulda, coulda, shoulda that we're just going to massively regret? Not going I hate that this is it because I just can't find the nerve to bet it. But I'm going to go with Max. Oh, Max Holloway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm plus go money. Max. <laughs> um, it's going to be the last fight of the night, and I'm going to be up till two o'clock staring at the ceiling, wondering why we didn't bet it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Oh boy, Max is a Max is a real good one. That you're right. That one you'd be like, come on, this guy just worked over Justin Gagey, and we're gonna <laughs> not bet on him against the Uh I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go there. Um, I will. Pick, you know what? Last week I picked Elise Reed over old Jessica Penny. I'm going Jeff Neal over old RDA. Let's see if we can make it fade the two older fighters uh, back to back weeks for me. If RDA looks old and slow, I'm going to be just fuming, like, fuming <laughs> mad. Like, why? Why didn't we pick Jeff Neal? By You're not going to get a live bet in fast enough. You're going to have it locked and loaded in that fight. <laughs> as soon as RDA Let's misses, slip open just as soon as RDA misses a hook and trips a little bit, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have not joined the Discord, go ahead and do that now. Thanks so much. Good luck on all your plays, and we'll see everyone later. See you Saturday.